here's one just like the one we're doing this morning. Okay, and um, this is actually out of 8H, so I'm doing some questions for you ahead of time. You're welcome. Given this, right, they want to know some conditions on G, what values of G, such that, and then they give you some, um, some properties of this quadratic. So for instance, what if we know, what if we know, um, so I'll say known, that one root or one of the zeros is um, x is equal to zero. Okay, if you know that one of the roots is equal to zero, then I would say, okay, I want to get a relationship between these coefficients and the roots, right? Well, I will begin my question by saying, let the roots be alpha and I would normally say beta, but I know that one of the roots is zero, right? So I'm just going to make beta zero. Okay, like so. Right? So now I can say I should know what the sum of roots is based on the coefficients, and I should know what the product of roots is based on the coefficients, right? Yeah, that's right. Okay. So the sum of roots, the sum of roots is just minus b on a, right? Minus b on a. Negatives cancel. There you go. You happy with that? So that's just alpha, right? Down here, the product of roots is c on a, right? So I've got 2g minus 5 on 2. Okay. So when you look at these, right, I just started off with the sum and product because that's what I can calculate fairly easily. You can see that one of these is more useful than the other <coughs> for working out what the value of g is. Can you see? Which one would you pick? I think I would pick this one, right? Because look at the first one. After that zero goes away, you still have two unknowns. Well, I can't really go anywhere there because I don't know what alpha is. It could be anything, right? But here, because you're multiplying by zero, there we go. And that's just the linear equation. You can solve that fairly easily. So out will pop your value for g. Okay? What's that going to be? Two and a half. Okay? Yeah, two and a half. So there you go. How might you do it? Let's have a look at one like, say, uh, oh, no, I'm not going to do that one. I'm going to do C. C is very interesting. C says um, known. What's known is what if, for the same quadratic, the roots are reciprocals of each other? Okay. If that's the data they give us, then we can assume that the roots be now, rather than say alpha and beta, which is like, who knows what they are, I know they're reciprocals of each other. So I can say alpha and, what's the reciprocal of alpha? One on alpha, okay? So now, again, I say, okay, well, what's the sum of the roots? Alpha plus, there's my second root, one on alpha. That's still going to be 3g minus one on two, right? That's still the sum of the roots there. I haven't changed the quadratic, right? And the product, alpha times 1 and alpha, is still going to be 2g minus 5 on 2. Okay. Now, again, you start to work out, depending on the conditions that get given to you, different equations, either this one or this one or both, will be useful to you. Which do you think here? One. Again, it's the second one. Right? That's just a coincidence, by the way. Um, it's because reciprocals, when you multiply them, give you something useful. Alpha and zero, when you multiply them, give you something useful. Um, later on, if I said, for instance, what if the roots were opposite to each other? They'd be alpha and minus alpha. Then multiplying, not so helpful. But when you add them, you get zero. So you get something simple you can solve. Does that make sense? Let's just quickly finish this off. You're going to get 1 equals 2g minus 5 on 2. So 2g minus 5 is going to be equal to 2. So 2g will equal to 7. So g is 3.5. Okay? So you can see, like, after you've established this, it just kind of becomes a bit of numerical work, right? Not difficult. This is kind of the hard step. Right? So this here, once you've got that laid out, you go into your sum and product and you think about what will be useful for you.